Hello, and uh, welcome on this lovely, I, at least in Maryland, lovely day. Um, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite uh, topics, the economic census. Um, and I want to make this as pleasant for you as possible. So all of you who are unable to hear me telling you this, uh, please use your telephone dial in to listen and use the chat. Um, I will be stopping halfway through it. Uh, to ask for questions, and then we will be asking at the bottom. If uh, I am going to be asking Linda to monitor the chats, so if there's anything you want me to urgency, urgently, if she wants to ask me urgently, please let her know and she'll interrupt me and, and we'll go forward. I'm planning on this to be about 50 minutes of content so that we will have plenty of time to uh, talk and answer questions. And like I said, this, uh, like she said, the slides will be distributed as well as the recording. My name is Jennifer Bocher. I have been a accidental business librarian for over 25 years. I actually went to school to become a documents librarian. I love what you do and I love the content of, of government documents. And I have been working with business and documents uh, for a long, long time. And in fact, in 2004, I wrote a book um, with Lenny Gaines or Leonard Gaines and uh, talking about the economic census. So they came to me and uh, the North Carolina, uh, the accidental government librarians, which I've been to a couple of their webinars, came to me and they said, would you mind talking about this? It's like, oh yeah, sure. But I do apologize because they did ask me to talk about it in August, but you know, summer. So that's a little bit about me. All of you, all of you are here because either you know a bit about the economic census, you you or you think that you may want to use it. What I want you to do while we are talking today, or while I'm talking and you're listening or whatever, to and if you have a separate cat, uh, database, go online and see all the things I'm talking about. But I want you guys to think about somebody who one of your patrons or yourself if you're a researcher who could use any of the content i'm talking about so that i want you to have in mind somebody and then as we go through this think about how could this help that individual so take some time think about who it is industries industry uh, means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And there's a lot of different frameworks um, or or models that actually ask you to do, to pull in industry information. There's PEST or PESTLE analysis, there's a Porter 5 analysis, even the SWOT analysis has an industry component. So when we're talking, when somebody says, I need to do an industry analysis of, let's say, the automobile industry, you have to really, really be saying, well, what do you mean by the automobile industry? Are we talking about sourcing the materials or the, the design of it? Are we talking about the manufacturing of this? Are we talking about the, the dealerships and the distribution? Are we talking about the finance? Are we talking about the aftermarket? Are we talking about the service of automobiles? And then more and more industry, whenever you do your industry profile. So when someone says, I need help finding industry on this. Have them really think of the the product in the pro in the 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 industry from start to finish, and have them say what segment of that industry they really need help on, and 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 waste and disposal of at the end of the life cycle of if you're doing a product or a service or anything else, what is the end of the life cycle? The end of the life cycle of research is the data management plan, you know? So think about the whole life cycle of that industry and then have them narrow in on what's going in on that industry. And sometimes an industry, you know, so like Ford Motor Company and Kellogg Motor Company, even though the Ford company is 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 manufactures cars and Kellogg's manufactures cereal that they both do the same thing at the headquarters. So when we're looking at the economic census, particularly we're looking at the establishment level 
activity there. So if the activity is the same, but they represent different industries, look at that activity if that's what you want. Now, a lot of us say, okay, I'm doing industry research. Um, how is this industry defined? Well, the question is who defines the industry? When we are talking about the, the, the economic census, we're not talking about companies. We're talking about industries. So when we're talking about, you know, so we have to realize what we're, we're talking about the industries, not the company, not, the, you know, and you could use the information to benchmark against your company and you, you could do all of these other things. But remember, what are you benchmarking? You're benchmarking the manufacturing, you're benchmarking the headquarters, or you're benchmarking the sales. So you have to re recognize what you are benchmarking. A lot of directories will put companies into certain industries, and that's the classification. Well, the publishers are doing that classification. The federal government does not classify companies. Companies describe what they do, and they try to match up to the right uh, industry. Um, and if they're wrong, because a lot of this, a lot of the data is also coming from administrative data. If they're wrong, then the the uh, the Census Bureau will contact the company and say, you know, can you please tell us a little bit more of what you do, and then so they can classify it right for the purposes of the economic census. Well, the federal government has always been interested in different industries and classifying. Let's group, you know, fishing together. Fishing is separate from forestry at the beginning, right? So let's separate all of these industries, and that was done in the 1940s with the standard industrial classification codes. And those codes became, you know, kind of problematic. And in 1997, the NAICS codes were developed, the North American Industry Classification System. Conveniently enough, this is the same time uh, frame when the NAFTA was being um, conceived. So because of that, and because of the trading partners and the trading bloc that the vision of NAFTA that it was, is that all of the uh, through the three North American uh, countries all agreed eventually on what classified different sections. So you may wonder why is tortilla manufacturing separate from just bakery? It's because it accommodated all three countries. Next codes, I mean, I can go <laughs> and on about NAICS codes. A lot of my early research was actually looking at this. So we can talk about that later in another time. And if you want me to talk about NAICS codes, I will. But let's just go on and just assume NAICS codes exist and they do a great job. They are hierarchical and um, they are hierarchical. And, and unfortunately, I thought I had a slide in here that showed you that. But um. In the 2017, NICS, one of the things about NICS codes is that they changed every five years. With every five years, there'll be a change. So some of you guys who may be working as a corporate librarian or you're working with an entrepreneur who has a, a whole new industry that isn't well defined by the NICS code, they're actually taking suggestions, literally taking suggestions from anyone for the 2022 uh, changes in the next codes. Well, the 2017 changes resulted in these uh, things. Some of the big, uh, they, they only, they didn't affect any of the two, three, four digit next codes, but they uh, did the, um, the uh, six digit next codes. So the, the, there's only changes there and there aren't that many changes. The major one is major household appliances because putting together a washing machine and putting together a refrigerator may be done in the same establishment than um, in the same establishment. So all of those codes were actually put together. So no longer are you gonna be able to have industries by refrigerator or laundry machines. But this is going to be addressed by the NAPS code. We're going to talk about NAPS shortly. The other big thing, I mean, the, a lot of these things made sense to combine. Um, one of the things that actually generated that was new is actually nanotechnology is recognized as its own industry. Um, and so nano got pulled out of biotech. So biotech and nano are their own industries now. 
how do I know which code to use? Well, um, if you're looking at the economic census, you want to look at the 2017 codes. But if you're doing a historical analysis of an industry, you're going to have to go into every five years those changes or changes in 2012, 07, 02, 97. So just realize that to be thorough, if you're doing historical analysis, that to make sure that your NAICS code did not change over time. And this is the location where you would go to change that. Now let's, uh, now let's get into the, uh, the, the new, this is new with the economic census, um, is to look at the product, the North American product classification system or NAPS. And I'm gonna I'm gonna mispronounce NAPS every so often, and I'm sorry if you're qu questioning, was that NAICS or NAPS? Um, if we're talking about a product or a service or a revenue or a construction in place or any of those other type of finished product or finished, you know, what is actually being sold or whatever, then we're talking about the NAPS codes. And the NAPS codes did kind of exist uh, in trade. Um, before 2017, but this year they are going to be going in um, and, and the NAPS codes will be uh, being greatly included into the economic census, but it's going to be a lot of national, serve, uh, national level and not really that much at state levels for disclosure reasons. So I'm, 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 I, it's a very dense, uh, I'm not going to read the slide, but I believe that these slides should be used as reference later on. So the big thing here is just to realize that this is not the industry. This is the product. So NAICS is the industry that happens, but the product, and, and it may be a physical product, it may be a service. It may be something else like, you know, it's usually a product or a service that is a result of what is being sold there or coming out of your industry is there. Um, the, I already mentioned the, the harmonized codes and uh, I also, I, it's not listed in here, but also the Bureau of Economic Analysis is going to be using um, these NAPS codes to generate their national accounts in their MP NIIP tables. Um, so just realize that that is, uh, you'll be seeing NAPS more frequently now, I hope, because it's being used for the harmonized codes. The harmonized codes are changing to match with these. Well, they actually kind of came out of it, but um, just realize that, that that's what's going on. Notice like over here um, that in the product tables that it is hierarchical, like uh, the the NAICS code that you have two digits and everything that's three digit matches into that two digits. So it, it, it becomes a hierarchical. And so reading your NAPS table may be a little bit strange, like reading a NAICS table. Again, we talked a little bit about this. We're not talking about a company industry. We're talking about the activities of that establishment. So yes, we have an HQ. We have, this may be a little bit old because read elsewhere and also they're not based in the United States, but anyway, so um, it's the establishment level. What is the activity of those establishment levels? And then there's an end product and that end product will be a uh, uh, NAPS. The economic census, uh, we, this is all about leading up to the economic census and the economic census is, is mainly is a census. It is not a survey except for one exception, which is, is construction, but there's reasons for that. I'm not going to be getting into here because I didn't never quite sure why. Um, but anyway, it's a census of every single business that is out there. Now, not all of the businesses are getting um, actually the survey instrument questionnaire. 
they are being actually this data is being pulled out of administrative records and that's the irs records that's the social security records so a lot of this is already being pulled out from these administrative records but for uh, larger uh, establishments or multi-unit establishments um, there, a survey has been sent out to them um, by the way talking about administrative records it is a one way the Census Bureau can pull data out of the IRS, but the IRS cannot go into the Census Bureau and say, how was that, what data did you collect from them? So, so it's the, hopefully the data is more accurate than taxes because the, the IRS cannot ask the Census Bureau, what did they say their revenue was? Um, and so there's not as much manipulation, they hope, um, on that point. But the economic census is we have um, is is national, and so we have to at this point talk about the geographic structure of the United States, and you're going to be able to get. Um, and remember, we're talking about establishments, not people. Um, and and we're going to be looking and and basically, if all of you know what the county business patterns, I love the county business patterns and. My uh, husband wanted me to put an image of the county business patterns there. I said, everybody knows those, but maybe you don't. Um, we could talk about the county business patterns later if you want, but basically it's the number of establishments, sales, payroll, and employees, right? This is the core data that is actually collected annually through surveys, but actually corrected and benchmarked on the economic census, which is why it's done every five years instead of every 10 years, like the census of population. So when they say census 2020, they're just talking about population and housing, not the economic census. Geography, one of the new, woohoo, one of the new things about the economic census is that it is including places. Um, and so places you got, you know, you know what the states are, you know what a metro region is, you know what a county is, you know what a zip code is. Places may be center, uh, uh, cities, but it could be any community um, that is not marked off being a, a city or an MSA, but any uh, place that has over uh, 22,500 uh, em uh, employees or um, or uh, also, um, what's the word, population. So those places have been defined by that. And so we can, we for the geographic data, you'll be able to find place, uh, you'll be able to find some place information in all of these industries. Notice construction is only at the state level. Management of companies are also only at state level and so is mining. But uh, um, construction, and that's when I asked, I said, you know, why is construction only at state level? And they said, that's the dirty secret that uh, they don't actually survey all construction companies. Um, so that's why the sample size is at state level only. Okay, what's new in uh, the construction, uh, or excuse me, in geography? Well, um, this is this is kind of fun. The, 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 of course, every geography, people move, company, uh, uh, excuse me, cities or towns expand or they contract and stuff like that. So all of these change, right, after every five years, and the economic census has to be able to capture this. So there has been 15 states have changed the statistical areas, uh, adding new statistical areas or a type of change by name change or something else. Um, in fact, some counties have, uh, uh, have uh, disappeared and, and reappeared in some states. Um, mainly like in Virginia, there were some center cities or independent cities that were incorporated into counties and things like that. Economic places, like I said, is relatively a new concept with the economic census and they've grown in and in, 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 in stuff like that. And what's really interesting for all those city uh, states that have offshore drilling or drilling is the same thing as mining because it's excluding uh, minerals out of the land. Um, anything offshore is also counted by the way in geography. And so if you go to the website that I put up there at the very top, 
you could actually uh, go in and get to the details. Like for North Carolina, not only do you find that um, 245 er uh, areas um, have, or places, actually I should say places, not areas, have either ga gained in land or lost in land. Either they, they became more incorporated or they lost some places. Three name changes. If you want to know who they are, you can go to that link and get down to the, the, the down to the state level with all of the different changes. Um, and then uh, 22 cities made the places, economic places, and six uh, places fell off the places. So just realize that's changing and um, that data is being collected and monitored. And 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 if I'm not going much into GIS or Tiger files or maps or anything else in here, but recognize that everything we're talking about in the economic census can be mapped. And you can go in and do that. And one of the new changes actually with the economic census is that Tiger, you know, before it used to be that all of the maps were static PDFs, but now they have all been um, taken out and put into a uh, tiger gis so that you can go to your state and actually be able to build okay what are all the economic places what are all and and stuff like that and it might be fun just you know to create a puzzle made out of all of the economic places in your state and say wh where where does this all fit in jennifer That's what i to say about geography um, I do want to state that geography, they recognize that the United States is, is, has some territories still, and they call those island areas, and the economic census does cover this content, um, and, and if you notice that the release dates are actually next month, and these dates are not, they're, they're firm data, and because the great federal people who are working there are have this uh, are being able to gather all this data for not just the geographic, um, but also the, the all of the other series and reports for those those uh, island areas. C M uh, C N M I stands for Commonwealth of Northern Mariana Islands, uh, and the reason why Puerto Rico is t is is having an, another year to put it together because of the devastation they had um, in 2018 that came through. And so this year, the 2017 uh, economic census won't reflect that kind of damage, but when the 2021 data comes out, you'll be able to see the changes of what how those hurricanes affected that regions in Puerto Rico and, and Virgin Islands. We're talking about a lot about definitions. We're talking a lot because what we're dealing with is data here. We're not, we're, it's the raw materials in which information and knowledge should be based upon. It, you know, all of these evidence base should be based upon the data. What you are, when people are talking about their communities, they should be looking at the data. And so this, the economic census has no analysis in it. It has, it is, you know, it is just about the raw materials. And I just love this image, so I always use it. So there's a question about um, the smallest EP, of the smallest economic place, I think, was one question. Do well, you know the you smallest mean? is a relative word because there's a cutoff. Because, so there are plenty of economic places that just barely made it at 2,500 population. Um, and so, and, but the thing is, if they didn't have any industries there, then there's not going to be any data in there. Did that answer your question? Yeah, I th I th well, it's somebody else's. And then the other question, so she can chat in and say, um, yes, thanks, Holly says. There was another question from earlier about suggesting, submitting a NAICS suggestion. Yes. Um, if you go to that NAICS website, in fact, let's go back. Let's go back. If you see the NAICS page, oops, over here, and so there's a, an announcement about uh, updating and how to do it. So if you go to the NAICS page, it'll be over here in the right side about announcements. And and seriously, they will take everybody's suggestions. 
and you know marijuana dispensaries i'm sure will be coming up in the 2022 uh changes yeah, yeah. awesome all right thank you very much those are the only two that i saw coming oh that, i think there was one more uh i think that was it for now yeah actually another oh you're good yeah you're fine another question came in um do some libraries create physical maps for patrons to put together like a special display tape display or do most rely on digital images hmm. Yeah, I, in fact, actually, I'm making a suggestion later on under have fun. Yes, you can have fun with the economic census, but um, the tiger, um, the tiger files um, and you can, um, I didn't have a link on it or anything like that. Just go tiger census and uh, and do um, your state and then you could go into your state and look at the different economic places and MSAs and counties and and they're different colors so you can see how they're layered and incorporated and you could decide on how you want to display that or incorporate that in um in whatever environment you're in I think that's a fun public library type thing where is this town all right I'm going to continue going we're going to actually get into the actual, now that we've talked about definitions and we have a common vocabulary with NAICS and NAPS and geographic as well as place as well as establishments and everything else. Now we're going to get into the fun part. Okay. The Census Bureau, which is a part of the Commerce Department, um, actually does a lot of surveys, right? But, and they give out monthly data, they give out quarterly data, they give out annual surveys. The, all of this information is based upon the five-year benchmarking of the economic census. So the essential thing is to get those every five years, the accurate picture so that they can go on and project and not have to take a big sample, bigger samples for their annual surveys and their quarterly surveys. So that's five years is very important to see how those things change. And by the way, I want to full, give full credit. When you see these, you could tell the difference between my slides and the census bureau slides the census bureau uses a lot more color and they obviously had a graphic designer and everybody working on this but uh because it is open um all government documents uh sources and materials that anything that the census bureau puts out or anything like that actually that's all open and you don't have to seek permission but ethically we have to give them credit so these slides that don't look like mine are are, are very much theirs and they're kind of obvious. Um, so just realize also anything that the census puts out, all of their webinars, all of their visualizations, everything else, you could just incorporate and use that within your library um, freely. Because it's not uh, like this, you could tell is a census uh, publication. So the economic census, yeah, yeah, we've been talking a little about everything else. Now the economic census is, um, from two digits to six digits using the NAICS codes. The places are new. Um, business size is is relatively new. They have a different way of approaching this thing. They, they're also including franchise information now in some of their characteristics in, in the product lines or the NAPS codes. They have over 200 different variables. That means different items that actually could be related to um, um, to a geography. So, you know, have at it, you you tech people out there, and you know who you are. <laughs> um, by the way, the data that's coming out as the new information comes out, this is the links here that will tell you about where the new data is coming about. And I'm not sure if any of you realize that, but today, they decided today of all days, not yesterday, but today to start issuing the data. So we're going to go in and have a little bit of fun with that. Um, along with the geographic changes, along with the NAICS changes, along with the, the new NAPS codes, 
Um, there's a couple of other changes with the uh, going on in this economic census. And one of them is the privacy rule or the disclosure rule. They are uh, strongly enforcing it now. Um, and so you're going to see a lot of Ds in the data when you get to the data. And we're not going to see that much data, by the way, here, because there's not much being released at this point. So you're going to be seeing a lot of Ds in especially the geography stuff because um, the smaller, uh, if there's only three establishment before in the economic census, they would say, hey, there's one establishment who does this industry in this town. Well, they can't even say there's one establishment now. They have to put a D in there. But hey, guess what? And don't tell the Census Bureau this because they might change it. The county business patterns don't have this limitation. So the the 2017 data coming out from this the county business patterns will tell you how many establishments actually are there in the location. Now, if they're still not going to tell you about their income or or the employee size or employment, but they are going to tell you about how many establishments there are that are there. Um, and, and, and actually to tell you the truth, because of these D's, because of these re disclosure things, um, uh, there's going to be, you're going to, you're, you're thinking that, oh, we got places and everything like that, that actually the, there's going to be less coverage. It's going to, it just geographically, it's going to be just be less coverage. And, and in fact, in manufacturing, um, it used to go down to the metro area, but now it's only going to be at the uh, state uh, area and maybe the county area. Um, also new this year, they're starting a new uh, series called the Annual Business Survey, which is going to be coming out annual based upon the economic census. But this is where you're going to be getting the uh, uh, survey business owners the entrepreneur, the, did you know there was an annual survey of entrepreneurs? That there are. And then also the innovation survey of micro businesses, which is for small businesses. So the annual business surveys are going to be really good for those people who are working with entrepreneurs in their communities. So look for that. And that's going to be annual, but they're going to group this information together now. How do we get to the Census Bureau? How do we get to the economic census? Well, www.census.gov. Once you are there, um, go and uh, click on where it says economic census under surveys, and you will be able to get to this information. By the way, the census of US businesses, the survey of business power, um, and, and some of these other surveys, the survey of governments, the county business patterns, all of these will be based upon the economic census. So you're going to get a flush of information in the, you know, annual survey of manufacturers. You get that every year, but you're going to have more information in the 2017 edition. This is what the website will look like when you get there. But to tell you the truth, it has changed today because instead of promotional data, they have a uh, date, a, a, a link there to data. And we're going to go and experiment and go look at that first look data as soon as um, soon as uh, I get to that slide. So this is what it will look like. Uh, notice the webinars, conferences. Um, which where they're going to be appearing, things like that are off to the left. The data is clicked there. It's 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 not too deep. It's maybe no more than three digits or three clicks to get to really good data. But they've done a really good job this year of uh, putting together the economic census. Sometimes you will run into the old, especially if you Google um economic census you'll look at the old uh uh economic census websites they haven't taken those down so um but the data that they have here is is pretty good let's talk about the data um there's as remember when you download data it is a snapshot in time especially with the first looks or the core business reports some of those things are going to change over time. They're going to be updated and things like that. Normally, a lot of the uh, when in the 
in the subject series, then those those data is actually don't change as much, but a point in time to download. And you can download the 2012 data to your heart's content into their zip files and everything else is right there. And they're going to continue offering downloads um, for to go right into Excel. But really, who has the space to hold those large files, you know, and curate them? And what do you do when you need to update them? What, um, so just realize that downloading does have its limitations. Okay. They have a variety, the Census Bureau has a variety of ways of getting information and, and my husband loved this because it's ease of use. So which is going to be easiest? To tell you the th truth, the quick facts gives you so much that it's, it's more confusing to me because I like going in and honing right in. I used to hate the American Fact Finder, or I used to have problems with the American Fact Finders. I would say hate, but I have learned to use it and I enjoy it a lot. I am hoping because I oh yeah, I didn't tell you this. The the census, the American Fact Finder has stopped. It, yeah, you saw this in the blurb. The American Fact Finder has stopped adding any new data. There is no new data in the American Fact Finder. Any new data coming out from the Census Bureau is being put into data.census.gov. And so we're gonna start learning that. And in fact, there's a link, I have a link on here to a webinar that hasn't gone public yet. Um, it was from last week about how to use the uh, data.census.gov for uh, the economic census. He was using 2012 data, but now that today we got 2017 data on there to play with. Uh, the census, economic census is made up of a variety of series, um, series, a geographic series, the uh, industry series, and the subject series. And then there's the um, reports. The reports, like I said, do get updated as it goes along. The series, usually that data comes out and it's going to be stable. For most of the series, because of the disclosure rule, I think you may get some county data or state data. Even state data may be iffy. Um, and you're going to have to look at national data, um, especially if you're looking at product line data, which is wonderful. We're going to look at the product line data, the product line data from a couple of censuses ago, and you can see why you would want to, to go into that. Let's go into some highlight some of these censuses and talk about uh, or a series and talk about uh, when they're coming out. Now, uh, September 2017, 19, that's actually today. They, like I said, they put it out. Let's go in and look at some of this data. But the first look data, this is the first look data that's coming out. It used to be called advanced um, search or advanced, but it's basically looking at the NAICS uh, structure at the national level. And uh, so you could see a lot of these changes. Some of these other things that are coming out um, are coming out later, and they give you a month to go into that. Um, by the way, here's the webinar on how to use the data.census.gov. It has the the webinar hasn't been loaded yet, um, but it was done just last week. So out today, hopefully. But remember before it was promotional materials here and I said, oh, there's data now there. Isn't this fun? So um, it is going to be national data at this point, but pretty soon we're going to be getting into geography. I love accommodation and food service. Who doesn't? So um, let's go into... And this is what data.census.gov results will be looking at. So we had the the geographic here. I went into geography to try to change it to North Carolina, but it's not quite there yet. Um, hopefully, who knows, they're going to be adding it throughout the day. So we see what sector, the economic sector they're talking about. And this is the, the when I say the hierarchy and the in the in the um the hierarchy of data, the way the Census Bureau does it. Eventually, you'll be able to filter this to like two digits or four digits. I haven't had time to play with this today because it just came out. But recognize that all of this adds up to be that. 
and then these two add up to be this and and uh well and the the four digits and then all the other four digits um and all below add up to be this so just realize that when you're looking at your NAICS code or your data try to make sure that you're looking at the same digit length of your data because you'll be tempted to add all of these datas up i'm going to go over oh it's not letting me go over um so here we have the number of firms that do this and then so that's the number of companies but then you want to look at the number of establishments and um i i really don't like I mean, I'm getting used to, I need to get used to data.census.gov. And I've already been um, in contact with the um, Federal L Library Depository webinars, and I'm going to be doing a similar uh, economic census for them in spring, and we'll have more time on how to use the data.census. But I wanted to show you the structure of how it will look and eventually you'll be able to limit on how all of these things as long as i'm here actually i'm going to show you how to um no i don't have enough time i was going to show you, you could just type in actually it okay the way to use this the way i found it to be fun i'm going to just type in north carolina and so we have 4,000 items in North Carolina, uh, tables in North Carolina. So as I say filter, I can go in and I can go in by this, you know, the accommodations 2012 data. And, and here's this information and I should be able to hide this. And so here we have, you know, so I didn't say search or anything else. And so here's this data table for the North Carolina 2012 data. And then I get into the table mode. And then once here, so I use the filter to get to the place I want to go. And then I customize the table by clicking on customize table. And this is where this data is. And I can scroll over and do this. Here's a lot of Ds. Apparently, there is one casino somewhere in North Carolina, but in the 2017, that will be a D instead of just even a number one, unless you go to county business patterns. So that is how uh, quick and dirty on how I found that I can run around in data.census. I type in the location or the industry I want, then I use the filters to get what I want. There's no search capabilities. You just hide the uh, filters and then your content will be up. Someone is asking about um, narrowing, expanding the columns if those are. Oh yeah, that's um, easy. Yeah. Or it was. Or do you have to download them? I was able to do another one. Um, I don't know. I, like I said, I'm just still getting used to this thing. Notice that we have the ability to map data. We have the ability to download the data here as well. And, you know, put it in Excel and have some fun with it. But this is how to filter into exactly where you want to go. Are there other questions? Okay, I'm going to start and get back to sharing my slides. Whew. Was it that hard? <laughs> Back to the slides. But like I said, the slides are going to come to you so you can click on any of these links and get into more interesting information. Oh my God, 10 minutes, really? Okay, so the geographic area regions will be coming out um, as the semester or as the years go along. The different geographies for the different states and the different industries will have better data than this broad range 
But to tell you the truth, if you're looking for geographic area cities at the county zip code or state level, use the county business patterns data because they're going to be actually be able to expand before the D's. Uh, be, uh, to say how many establishments, even if there's a D. And here I put in, and I know you can hardly read it, this is what quick facts will look for you. Here's the 2016 data, and there is no sales data there for 2016 because revenue is not counted in county business patterns, but the 2012 data does have uh, revenue. This is for um, healthcare. You probably couldn't read it. But um, the quick facts, like I said, I, I actually had a little bit harder time trying to sort that out. I'm an old timer. The island data, we've talked about island data, but I do want to emphasize that that is it's the the island is not is going to have the geographic core data, but also all of the also subject data, um, the subject series and the report data will also be separated for the island areas, not including Hawaii. Hawaii is a member of the state. Um, the NAICS, the NAPS code versus NAICS codes used to be. Um, merchandise, product line, revenue line, service lines. But what's really cool is, let's go to the next slide, because this is 20, uh, uh, 2007 data, because um, the 2012 data in the, uh, anyway, um, in here you could see that at gasoline stations, what products were sold at gasoline stations in the United States. So here you can go by NAICS code and say what products are distributed or or sold there, or you could go like to wine, use the NAICS code or the NAPS code for wine, and then say well what other establishment is wine sold in. So this is really this is this is the hidden gem that a lot of your entrepreneurs will really really like because they want to say I have this product or this service. And I want to be able to, where else can I market this? Where else is it being, um, these things being sold? Um, the establishment data um, is uh, establishment and firm data. There are some strategy people that really love this data. Um, it's not sexy to me. The big thing that I like actually is that the, um, the materials uh, consumed. So if you want to say who is buying, you know, how much, how much, you know, dog or, or how much uh, uh, cow meal or byproduct is in um, dog food, you could go in and using the NAPS codes to see about that. Miscellaneous subjects. Oh, I love miscellaneous subjects. They, they've added seven tables. Um, like, you know, the meth modes of instruction for educational services, but they took out 38 tables and um, some tables, I don't know what they've taken out and those details are still being finalized as I've been told. Who knows, some tables may be being put back in if you wanted some of those tables. Contact the Census Bureau to, because they're still deciding, literally, your voice could have a reason why something was put back in. But like for food service, they could, you know, think questions about seating capacities, um, uh, sales by part of day, uh, establishment, no, wait, the number of how many guest rooms are in accommodations, things like that um, are all uh, things that you would find in miscellaneous tables. And actually, if you have my book, if you have my book, uh, page, what is it? Uh, 84 and 85 have what the miscellaneous tables are there. New page is very long. No, oh God. Okay, I got five minutes. Sorry. Um, Non-employer statistics. Basically, these are your gig employers. These are the people who are independent, who are not, you know, who are their own bosses. So if you're looking at non-employer statistics um, and you notice that the taxi service has jumped, um, for the non-employers, um, it's because of um, uh, it's because of the gig uh, economies. If you look at accommodations, and it's like, how can you have a non-employer accommodations? That's Airbnb. 
So just realize that the non-employer statistics will be incorporating the gig economy. And there's a really good uh, webinar um, on that um, in the fr from the Census Bureau. <sighs> Uh, I had changed this to color blue, but went back to yellow. 75% um, of all businesses are non-employers, but only makes up 3.5% of all sales. But with a gig economy, it's actually has the, the non-employer numbers have grown an awful lot. A part of the time spent in the economic census is the census of governments and of public schools. It is the second largest industry of the United States according to the uh, Bureau of um, uh, Economic Advisors. And I can talk an hour. In fact, if you click on this page, you'll get to a webinar where I go on for an hour about the census of governments, which is wonderful. I'm not talking about these other things because we are short on time, these other parts of the economic census. I do want to state that there are some industries that are not covered by the economic census. And here we have a list of what they are, but realize that the census, there are some things that are covered in the county business, that's what the CBDB is. County business patterns does cover some of these industries. The Census of Agriculture does agriculture. There's the Bureau of Transportation Statistics does rail transportation. And so just realize that these may not be in the economic census, but they might be covered in other places. If you're not quite sure about how to find the data or if the data exists, um, uh, that uh, you can actually look at the instruments, the questionnaires that the different uh, establishments received and say, well, what kind of data did they ask for? So if it, would they asked for it, it's out there somewhere and you can contact the Census Bureau for it. The most common mistakes that people do is to realize that all of these reports all of these uh, reports do not include the non-employers. All of the series do not include the non-employers. So if you want a true picture of your community, make sure you're looking at the non-employer data as well as maybe, and I'm gonna show you later on the economic census data, or excuse me, the census of government data for some industries, things like that. Beware of totaling the columns. We, when I showed you that accommodation things, beware that you make sure that your next code is all at the same digit level so that you can compare apples to apples. There's a lot more than geographic data in the economic census. Um, and that actually, um, when you're looking at also reports to get a bigger picture, like if you're in Durham, that the healthcare and social services has a whole different um parallel data for tax exempt for things that are are tax exempt so make sure that if you're getting a picture of your community to include those tax exempt industries here i have some suggestions on having fun and we were going to talk i was going to ask about what's going on learning more uh the i i love the uh, federal depository library program academy there's a link there to all their older webinars um accidental government here we go here we are but also the census bureau if you are interested in apis if you're interested in data visualization if you're interested in just training yourself more about how to use data this is open governments there's a new service called the data academy so we had a question um lamonica was asking uh will the data points be the same in the annual business survey this was a little bit further back yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, um the for the data points will if it if the uh, for the it's like I said all of the annual census I when they come out for that year that the data comes out in the reference year 2017 annual survey of manufacturers or whatever it will have the same data points as what's in the economic census so if you're used to using one service. Or, or your patrons are used to using this one survey, it's gonna be the same data. So you don't have to go back into the economic data to pull it out as well. Uh, hopefully that was the question. And then there was a discussion about what's gonna be available in AFF versus in census.gov. 
Um, 2017, nothing in the American Fact Finder for 2017 economic census, nothing. And eventually they're planning to sunset the American Fact Finder and moving everything into data.gov. But right now they're just busy making sure that the new stuff will fit in there and how to use it. And they are actually very, very friendly and open to suggestions on how to make it easier and friendlier. Um, and uh, so when you see them in the uh, conferences or just contact them directly with suggestions on how to make it better, because literally it's like six people working on this, um, on how to make it better, uh, the data.census.gov. Great. Any more okay. questions? This is great questions. Every oh. All right. Go on because uh, you know I want to ask the real the real questions, but I want to point it out that when you get to these slides, there's some more. So if you're interested in API stuff, there's more information on API here. Here is the structure of the NAPES code or the the NAPS code, so that you could see what kind of industry they're going into. And here is like here's the structure for the NAPS for books. So you could see that structure and, and how it's the wholesaling and retailing ties in with actually the, um, the those different industries and the abbreviation. So, you know, what does D st really stand for? What does G stand for? I put those abbreviations in there and then just some other fun stuff. And, and oh, some of my other favorite um, websites for uh, economic data, by the way, a lot of people don't realize that if you want between the five years and you say, you know, what has changed, the the PPI, the um, producer price index put out by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, uses the NAICS codes. Um, in fact, larger NAICS codes, and so you could actually assume, and this is actually what Census Bureau does too, but with more sophisticated uh, projections. They use the uh, PPI for each industry to say, you know, is this going up or, or lower? So you could, this is a way of getting more current data. Yes, you got a shout out from Bob Ray. Hi, praise. Bob Ray. <laughs> so, thank you so much everyone for coming. Thank you, Jennifer, for the presentation. This is very helpful. It was easy to do and I would encourage anybody who has any content to contact these folks and uh, do a webinar for them. I visited North yeah. Carolina. I don't live there. They they but they're still willing to listen to me talk. Let me talk. <laughs> yes, we would love for people to do presentations. So please do get in touch with me. But thank you. Join me in thanking Jennifer for joining us today. And everybody have a great rest of your week and weekend.